domain and range using set notation is going to be our focus. So on this graph on the left, the furthest, we're going to talk about domain first, we're talking about a set of x values that exist on this graph. So the furthest to the left it goes is right here, but it doesn't actually include that point because it's hollow. So you, you graph it on the x-axis if you wanted and say that that's the, the lower boundary, but I'm not including that point, it's anything above that, until we get to here, which is the furthest right that it goes. So if you were to graph this as an inequality using just one variable, it would look like a hollow dot here and then a solid dot here and you would write that inequality. So for set notation, when we're doing the domain, we talk about the x value. So we have to write down x. We use this symbol for such that. And now we write our inequality. So the lower boundary is minus 2. That point is not included, so we use just less than, not less than or equal to. Our x value, if we were to read this, it would, if we wanted to go backwards, it would say that x has to be greater than minus 2, which is true. x has to be greater than minus 2 up until this point, which is our upper boundary. So that's going to be positive 4 for the x value for that. And that point is included because it's solid. So less than or equal to positive 4. So that's our inequality describing the x values. It says anything above minus 2, up to and including 4. Then we have to tell everybody that along the way, we're allowed to use any number. They can be fractions. They can be irrational. So down here, everything in this um, set is included. So we got to say it's a part of the real number system, and you use this symbol here. It's kind of funny looking R. So then we write x is an element of, it means the x values there are a part of, or it belongs to, the real number system. Then that whole thing has to go in a set of squiggly brackets, kind of because we're listing stuff. So it looks kind of ugly, however most of it ends up being the same every time and you're just switching a few things. So if we're going to do the range, we could fill it in um, first before we actually go look at the graph. So once again, it's got to be a squiggly bracket. And we're talking about the y values this time, so that changes. It's a set of y values such that, then we have our inequality, then we write a comma, and y is going to be an element of the real number system. When would it not be an element of the real number system? Well, that would be if you have something like a stippled graph um, where you know it shows up as just dots and there's gaps, so then all of a sudden maybe you're talking about only the integers are okay, um, or there's context to your question that, that stops you from having certain numbers, you have to list it. That's a brutal squiggly bracket, but it'll work. So now all we have to do is fill in the inequality. For your range when you're doing set notation, it's going to basically look like this every time. And once again, this might, be, this might change, but for uh, grade 10, for what we deal with, generally it doesn't. So now once again, we need the lower value for y. What's the lowest it goes? So it goes to here, which is minus 4. That point is included because it's a solid dot, so it's less than or equal to y. How high does it go? Well, it goes all the way up to this point here, and that's a solid part of the line. That looks like 12, so greater than or equal to 12. So normally when you're writing this kind of two-part inequality, you're using the less than or equal to sign. You're putting the lower uh, limit on the left and the upper part on the right, the upper boundary. Um, so that should be your domain and range for this graph. If you were to do it in interval notation, I'm not going to get too far into it. Interval notation, I believe, people tend to find a little bit easier. The rounded bracket means that that point's not included, and all you're doing is the set x values. If you look up here, what's the lower limit? Minus 2. What's the upper limit? 4. So you're just putting those two numbers in, and then use a square bracket if it's included, and a rounded bracket if it's not. So for the range, 
Um, minus four is the lowest it got, that point's included. 12 is the highest it got, that point's included, so it's got both square brackets. And then you're not, you don't have to tell what number system or anything in, in using interval notation. All right, one more example. See how fast I can go. So, write the domain and range using set notation. So, this graph looks a little bit different. Um, it's linear, but it also gets cut off. So, if there's a point where it ends, then they're going to have to put a point. They put a point down here, even though it's hollow. They didn't put a point here. So, what you should either see, depending on your book, you'll either see an arrow, which implies that it moves on forever and ever in that direction. A lot of math teachers think that's what should be used, and I would tend to agree, but you'll also see it in some books where they don't write anything there. And then what happens is you have to say, well, does that stop there? But you can see they clip the graph here. There's nothing telling us that this stops. This is just where they clip the graph. So we have to assume that it goes on and on forever. So for the sake of this question, I'm going to put the arrow in. That would be what we would hope would be there. But if there is no arrow and it's right at the edge where they clip the graph, there's no point. We have to assume it goes on forever and ever. All right, same idea. So we start with a squiggly bracket. Set of x values. Do the domain first such that what's our inequality? Well, in terms of how far left it gets, it gets to this point here but it's not included. So minus one, minus two, minus three is less than, it's not included, that point's hollow. Less than x, less than this point here tells us, well this arrow here tells us it keeps going in that direction. So what happens? That graph is gonna go forever and ever in that upwards right direction. So our x values, it's just gonna keep going to infinity so we're talking positive infinity, and we can't actually get to infinity, so we put um, the less than sign. And then x is an element of the real number system. Now, there's an easier way to write this inequality, so that's if you wanted to do it as a two-part. You'll see that in some books. The other way to write it is you could have just said, well, this is the same thing as saying that x has to be greater than minus 3. So if you wanted to take this part here out and use x is greater than minus 3 instead, it says the exact same thing. For our range, squiggly bracket. We're talking about the set of y values such that. What's the lowest it gets? It tries to get to minus 4, but it doesn't count that value. So minus 4, just less than sign y values, what happens to it? It goes to infinity. So you can either put less than infinity and y is an element of the real number system or you can take this part out let's just actually do it this time or you can take this part out and say, well, if negative 4 is less than y is less than infinity, that's just saying that y has to be bigger than minus 4. That's the simplest way to write it. Um, and once again, depending on your textbook, that's what they may give you. So if you just look at it, well, y is bigger than minus 4. And that's fine. Uh, interval notation example is down here as well.